We made this smoke machine a while ago, and a lot of people liked it. It's very simple, but our soldering iron went out, and we're going to replace it using this old heater. It's from an old coffee pot. As long as it's something that'll get hot, and we'll be able to burn that mineral oil. When we first made this, we used a shell of a Bic pen, which fits a bicycle pump. They're a little wobbly, they're not very stable, so we're gonna, we have an idea on how to stabilize them using a little bit of a different method. We're gonna save the old lid, even though we're gonna make a new one, just because we might replace the soldering iron at some point. Using the body of a Bic pen, it's the same process drilling the hole, except this hole is a little bit smaller than the body, so it won't fit in. But what I did on this end is cut a chamfer, and then right at the end of the chamfer, there's a groove, so that slides and pops in. It's really tight to get it in here, and that's exactly what we want. That's it. You can see, I mean, that's stable, first of all, but it, it really doesn't move. The body of the Bic pen fits perfectly into the bike pump here. Now we're probably going to add some epoxy around here to make sure everything seals and it makes it a little bit stronger. Here we need to take off the clip and make sure everything is flush and then also grind that. Away. There it is. You could chuck it up into a drill or into a lathe. I'm just going to chuck it up into the lathe. The drill would work fine. The reason I want to use the lathe is because I have a little bit of a rest here I can use for my tool. I'm using one of my lathe tools because it has a wider cut angle here, but you could also use an X-Acto knife blade. I'm gonna start out by drilling the hole a little bit too small and then get it to the exact size with the ream. I'll deburr it with a little bit of sandpaper. Now, since this has a taper on it, I can control how deep I want it to go. So. Right now it only pushes to about right there. I need it to go a little bit further up and I still want it to snap into this groove tightly. So I only want it to maybe go to about right here. That's where I'm gonna stop. Just test fit it every once in a while. You don't wanna to go too far. Now what I'm gonna do is try to really push this into place. Sure it's tight. I think that's it. And now both of these are very sturdy. The only movement you get is from the sheet metal. And you can even see, we've got a tight enough fit where that sheet metal is bowing up. So that's really good. This is really tight and very stable. If you are using a soldering iron whenever you're building this, just make sure that no metal parts of the soldering iron are touching the lid. We have plastic glue to metal, because if that metal is making contact with the lid, everything is gonna get really hot and start melting things. Now we can push our tubing on, and that's a nice, tight, airtight fit. We're gonna drill a hole a little bit smaller than this rubber piece so it gives a good fit, and it just so happens it's an S size bit. I don't know what fractional size that is, but that's the letter. This is my brother's drill bit set, so we have to make sure we put everything back because if we lose any of these drill bits, right now as you can see everything is where it's supposed to be. There's a $50 fine. I'm just gonna deburr this, make sure everything is clean. We put a rubber grommet in here to protect the wire from getting cut, though we still need to put some either epoxy or some silicone in there to keep it sealed. The heater really only needs to touch the wick, and in this case, it's an old cotton sock with some baby oil, which is mineral oil, just with some fragrance. We can adjust the wire to the correct size, and right there is good. This is some red high temp RTV silicone gasket. So it's just a silicone and it's also rated for high temperature. And we're gonna glob a lot of it on the cord here and then we'll pull it through backwards. This won't be in contact with high temperature. And this is just touching the lid here, sealing it and keeping the smoke from leaking out. The coffee pot heater did not get hot enough. So we ended up wiring an old soldering iron, which always seems to work. Now we had to disassemble it, take the handle off but if you have one that has a plastic handle like this, where that plastic flare can glue on with no metal pieces touching the lid, that would be best because you can't glue this metal piece onto the lid because all that heat will wick through it and burn up all the plastic. With that old soldering iron, it's working much better. That's what we want to see coming out of there. It would be best if you used a soldering iron like this. This has a plastic housing and then just the plastic is gluing on to the lid right here. If you had one that had a metal plate here and you glued the metal plate to the lid, 
it's gonna conduct a lot more heat and heat everything up, burn everything and melt it. So you wanna, if you can, get something plastic. If not, we just had to drop this farther down into the can. We'll hook it up to the manifold here. And what we're looking for is any air leaks, especially around the gasket here where it connects up to the head. We've got lots of smoke built up in that jar. We can't even see through it. Now we'll start pumping in that smoke. Looks like we'll need to seal up some of the edges around here like we did on the other one because there's a bit leaking out. As we pump, we can see smoke coming out of this hose right here. Just remember, if there's anywhere that smoke is coming out, air can also get in or out. We've been using this design for just years and it's been working really, really well. It's really cheap to build, it's really simple. And there is a problem right there. We gotta fix that. Once that soldering iron gets hot, I'm not running out of smoke. I'm continuously pumping this through the tube and there is no shortage of it. This thing is really loose on here. It'd be really hard to find without a smoke machine, especially if you used anything else. So this is really easy to find and we just need to tighten up this one screw. I can see a crack right here on this rubber elbow. I'm not seeing any smoke coming out of here, but I'm sure it's not far off from all the way through, so that could be a problem. Now we'll pump it and see if that fixed it. Now whenever we pump it, it looks like we've got that problem fixed. It's no longer pumping out any smoke, and right now that crack isn't a problem. This gives off some really nice thick smoke. This is just a really simple design. It's pretty cheap. Using a glass jar, you can see how much smoke you have, and then uh, it's gonna withstand the heat. It's not gonna melt. So using like a plastic peanut, peanut butter jar wouldn't work. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Let's go ahead and turn it on. It's running a lot better. It would be misfiring a lot more if we wouldn't have fixed that leak. If we check the fault codes, none of the error codes have come back.